Welcome to another round of Coffee and Questions. What's today's topic? We're going to talk about how to make a drill bit holder stand. But you could use it for other things. And I have it right here and I'm going to explain things to you in just a sec. This probably took me 45 minutes. Anyway, it took me less than an hour. And I just whipped this out without any uh, fancy finishing techniques or anything else. So I've got a lot of these magnetic dishes that you get from out at Harbor Freight. And I thought, well, I'm tired of throwing drill bits and stuff in them and I got things scattered. I got some laying by my drill press and then I can't find them when I want them and all that other stuff. So I thought, well, hey, I got an idea. So let me show you a picture real quick. Okay, now from that picture, um, I did some measuring and I thought I would have to make it fairly large. And I didn't want anything large. I wanted something that would fit a specific area on this bench right here. So I went over and I measured the length and the width that I wanted. And then I went out to the scrap pile. And I grabbed myself out a couple of pieces of plywood and a couple pieces of pine. Well, one piece of pine. So this is plywood, this is pine, and then up here these two are plywood. Scrap. Shop grade. Um, just, you know, you can get it out at Home Depot, whatever else, if you want to. And what I did is I cut two pieces to that exact dimension that I wanted in length and width. And then I screwed them together. So I thought I could always unscrew this and modify it whenever I want to. Yes, you can use wood glue, you can use tight bond, you can use Gorilla Glue, whatever you want if you want to glue them instead. I use screws. Um, and what I did is I countersunk them uh, with a bit. Let me see. Up here, I, all my drill bits will fall out. But right up in here... I'll see if I can zoom in. I drilled a small little pilot hole real quick. I did uh, the countersink bit. I used drywall screws. Now, I know you get a lot of flack from drywall screws. They're very brittle and they snap on you easy. But I found if I just drill a little tiny pilot hole real quick, sometimes not even a pilot hole, but I'm very careful about when I use my cordless on zapping this thing in. You don't over torque them and then they won't snap on you. But it's kind of a project that's forgiving because if you did you could just put another one beside it on the bottom nobody's going to see it okay so now back to the project so now then i had the base of this which is what you see right here then i turned around and i cut two more pieces but i went ahead and i decided i'm going to cut them and inset them a little bit like you see right here okay so i came in just like a couple of inches or so and i made another mark and i cut it like this and then you can use a paint can, any type of a round can that you want. I used a compass and I drew an arc after I found the center of this second square piece. I found the center, I used a compass, I drew an arc, I figured good enough. Then I used a jigsaw and I cut it out. Then I went ahead and I used screws again and countersunk them and put these two pieces together. Then I just sanded the inside of this. I've got like a little drum sander. Um, I'll drop a link below. They're very inexpensive. You can get them off Amazon. You just wrap sandpaper around them. And I put it on my drill press and I just held it and I sanded off the inside of this. That's all I did. And then I went ahead and I affixed it onto this big piece here. So how did I do that? I did it the same way. I used a drill bit. I drilled up and into it and I used longer drywall screws because I've got a box of them laying around on all different lengths. And I put a couple in there. You don't need to put more than a couple. It's not going to go anywhere. Then I had the second tier done. Okay. So then it's just a matter of, okay, what am I going to put in here? Now, I've got drill bit boxes just like everybody else. I've got them in my tool chest. But I use things real common. Um, not always just strictly drill bits. I've got four, well, they are drill bits. I've got Forrester bits, spade bits step drill bits, I got my pencils here, my sharpie markers here, over here you know I've got my bits for putting in you know Phillips screws, I've got my chamfer bits right behind it, they're right here, 
Okay, so then I had an idea. I took a hole saw, three and a quarter inch. You can use a drill press, you can use a cordless, a corded drill, whatever you want to use. And I went down almost all the way through this first piece of pine, almost all the way. It's okay if you do, but I mean, that gives you an idea of the depth. So from this, let me show you what you can do. So you say, well, I got one of these little four inch round Harbor Freight magnets at the bottom. This bottom will fit perfectly right into there. Now I've got a little magnetic tray to still throw stuff in. And I thought, well, that magnetic bottom is pretty much the same size as these larger six inch ones. So I went ahead and I got one of those, or I had one. And I put it in here and see there's very little play, but there is a little bit. But it sticks in here. Okay, so it's nice. Now what I like about this is I've got my soap markers, I've got extra drill bits that you know go to my cordless and whatever else you want to put in here. I mean it doesn't matter. So this was a nice touch for me. Okay, now when you do this, I mean I didn't drill all the holes that I could have. I still got plenty of room to drill more holes up in through all these places. And if I start to run out of room, you can always add on to it. You can expand it. I can always turn around. Let me turn the back of this here. Let's see. I could probably put a 4x4 four four block along here. Let me see if I can find a scrap piece. I'll show you a trick. All right, I changed the angle on this because I wanted to show you something. Somebody made the comment to me, this is fine, but you're going to run out of room pretty soon. And then what are you going to do? Well, I made it this way because it works for me in the area I'm going to put it in. But this is what I thought because I measured it right afterwards. Here's a little 2x4. And it gives me just a little bit more height right in through here. Up. Here's another scrap piece of plywood. I can cut it to the same length. Now the width, I can turn around and cut this right down the middle. Or I can leave it longer. If you leave it longer, you're going to need another support. And I'll show you. But all I had to do is go like this. I would secure this into the back of this, got one or two screws, or glue, and turn around and put this here, like this. Now, what I liked about this, it's a step here, it's like a step up, got a little bit more height, okay, and then I can try and drill more holes like this, in rows. If you're going to go with this big piece, you're going to need another 2x4, it doesn't have to be real big, but you're going to want that support in this back section. Then this can be on here once you screw it all up like this. Okay, what I liked about this idea is now it gives me this whole area if I want to make that more massive of a big one. Or I can cut it probably right here and I could probably get away with just a little small support there because it's not holding a lot of weight. Okay, but my point is, is expandable, okay? And you can do that in a lot of different ways yourself. So, making this basic one, which I said only takes me, took me less than an hour, boom. And I have something organized where, you know, I can go put stuff back and I can put them back into these holders. Like I said, this is my most frequent used stuff right now. Um, I start getting back into the metal working here within a month. And when I get some projects going, this little configuration can change. Or I'll add this on back here and have this for all my metal. You know, you can organize this however you want. Okay, let's go over to questions and answers. The first question was, somebody said, did you put a finish on here? Well, yes and no. This is pretty much well sanded. This is shop grade plywood and the pine is just how I got it out at the big box store. I didn't really do anything to it. But... I cleaned it, I just wiped it off real good with a rag, I put a coat of linseed oil on here, I let it sit for 45 minutes, give or take, and then I took some just blue shop towels and I scrubbed it off. Um, not being in a rush, I let it dry till the next day, and I put one more coat on it just for the heck of it. You don't have to even do any of this, uh, you could just make it and leave it alone. But to answer your question, I put a coat of two coats, and I was done. And then I started uh, drilling, rather, all of my holes and started putting all my bits in the way I want them organized right now. But that's how I did it to answer your question. Did I put any other finish over the top of that when it dried? No. Um, we're not trying to do finished furniture here. This is just a utility thing for, you know, DIY out in your garage. You know, take your scrap wood and make a drill bit holder. 
you can also you know get your kids involved like I keep saying on my videos this is a project that I use a cordless drill no big deal there I did use a jigsaw to cut out this arc okay again basic hand tools and you would want to watch them of course drill bit countersink bit uh, really there's not much to making this project it's very handy um, they would actually probably enjoy you know the fun of making it just keep an eye on them um, anyway okay there's not a whole lot of questions on this video um, I didn't leave it in the forum that long to get you know solicit anyway a bunch of questions this you don't have to spend a lot of time sanding it unless you wanted to you don't even have to sand it at all um, I keep saying a lot of stuff it's not a beauty contest but it's a very functional very handy to have thing you can make them in rows you can do whatever you want you can cluster things together like over here I have the step drills over here I got all my spade bits I do have one Forestner bit in here because I'm going to drill more holes to put in more of my Forestner bits and in through here I have both you know my my wood and my steel bits you can put the tray in here if you want you don't have to in that first picture there was no metal tray involved but I just thought hey you know what that would be kind of cool and I set it on here and I thought I don't like how it sticks up hole saw go down and so how did I carve it out was a question I have a trim router uh, you could use a chisel I suppose you don't have to go out and buy a trim router I got one roll inexpensively off Craigslist and you know I got a handful of Rayovi bits which are good enough for me because I don't do a ton of routing and they work perfectly fine and I used one of my Rayobi router bits and I took out all that bulk wood that's sitting in here and made it flat and then this just sits right down in there just like that you know to me this was a very slick idea I really do like having this magnetic tray right here in the middle sometimes when I'm working I just chuck them in there I mean, you know, to have some fun. I'm going to throw up a couple of cartoons here for you right now at the end of the video. I think you might like. Other than that, I'm going to go ahead and include it. Um, hit the notification bell. Let me know if you like me putting up these quick how-to videos. Um, I didn't spend a lot of time teaching you to sand or anything like that because I didn't really do any sanding. I just used this wood the way it came from the store to show you guys you can make this stuff fast and easy you're not going to spend all day on this this was a very quick easy project notification bell give me a comment let me know what you like let me know you know if there's any questions you have on this i'll see you on the next video look forward to seeing you folks bye bye